Hi, I'm Mark from G-Code Tutor. I'm here with Practical Machinist today to look at the two coordinate systems we use when programming CNC machines, the Cartesian and the Polar. So before we get into too much detail, we need to know which way the axes move inside our machines. So I made this diagram here and we're looking at the Cartesian coordinate system. So the Z axis goes up and down, the Y axis goes forwards and backwards to us and the X is left and right. Now if you have a horizontal mill, this will change, so bear that in mind. So Z is always coming down from the center line of the tool. Now on a CNC lathe, our Z axis goes in towards the chuck and out and our X axis controls the diameter. And if we're lucky enough to have a Y axis on our machine, we can come towards the operator with the Y. Now also with a lathe, we have the C axis, which is the rotation of the spindle. The B axis is often the tailstock stock or sub spindle that moves towards and away from our main spindle. But during this video, we're just gonna be concentrating on the Z and X as far as lathes are concerned. So the Cartesian coordinate system is what we learned at school with graphs. It's our Y and X axes. So this diagram assumes we're looking down onto the table of a Miller machine with our X going left and right and our Y going forwards and backwards and our Z would be coming up towards the camera. Now, if we were going to plot using the Cartesian coordinate system, we would do it the same way we would plot on a graph. Now, when plotting graphs, we tend to put the X axis first. Now, it doesn't matter so much on CNC machines because the G-code controls reads each line as one individual block. So it would see X and Y movements together and not put them in order. So if we were going to plot a shape on this graph, let's put a point here. And this is at 1, 1. Now, this could be inches or millimeters. It doesn't matter. It's just units. As we cross over our datum position in the middle, the zero, zero, our Y axis would turn to a minus value. So we're coming down below that point, so Y would be minus. So here I'm gonna plot three minus two to give us this position. Now the next position over here would be minus in both axes because again, we're crossing over that zero point. So I've put a point here at X minus 2.5 and Y minus 1.5. And then finally, at the top here, we have x minus 2.5 and y plus 3 because we're coming up in the y axis. So that's given us a rough shape that we've plotted on our graph here. So when we write that in G-code, it would look like this. So our first point would be x1, y1. Our second point would be x3, y minus 2. Our third point would be x minus 2.5 and y minus 1.5 because we've crossed over that datum position in both axes. And our final position up the top here is x minus 2.5, y plus 3. And then back to the start position. So that's how we plot our points using the Cartesian coordinate system on a CNC Miller machine. And on a lathe, we would just swap those axes around so x would run from top to bottom and z would run from left to right. So that's all pretty much standard stuff and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this system. So let's have a look at the polar coordinate system and see what the differences are. Now to switch polar coordinates on, we would use G16, and to switch it off, we would use G15. So G15 would put us back into Cartesian coordinate system. Now if we have a program with polar coordinates, you might want to add G15 to the safety line of each section of code, just in case we stop the machine when polar coordinates are active, so we don't end up with the cutter going to a position we are not expecting. Now when we are programming with polar coordinates, our graph looks a little different. Instead of axes, now we're looking at degrees. So if we're going over to the left, which used to be X plus, we're now looking at zero degrees. And if we're going straight up at Y plus, we're now looking at 90 degrees. And the center of this graph is the position of the tool, not the datum position of the component. So let's plot a line from the start position of our tool over to there. And we're gonna say this line is 50 millimeters and at 45 degrees. So what polar coordinates do is we issue a length and an angle for our end point. So we're not plotting with X and Y like before, we are plotting with the length of the movement and the angle of that movement in relation to the degrees on this chart. 
So when we program this point with G-code, we would say this was X 50 millimeters and Y 45, X being the length and Y being the angle. When working with polar coordinates, our plane selection is very important. And I also have a video of plane selection with Practical Machinist to discuss this in more detail. So this lesson assumes that G17 is active and we're working on the X and Y planes. So why would we use polar coordinates over Cartesian? Well, we have a few reasons. Now imagine that this graph here is the first hole in a bolt hole circle. It makes it a lot easier for us to plot the points of each hole using a drilling cycle if we switch over to polar coordinates. And on CNC lathes with live tooling such as machining centers and mill turns, we can use this to mill profiles and shapes from our Z axes along the part. Now care must be taken when switching over to polar coordinates and back again because our programs need to be easy to read by any operator or programmer that comes along. We're not trying to trick people and trip them up here. So when switching backwards and forwards between polar coordinates, we need to only do it when necessary to make the programs still easy to read so we don't confuse any new programmers or operators that may come on that machine and the program suddenly switches to using limps and angles randomly throughout the code. If you need to brush up on your G-code programming skills, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have many courses on G-code programming, CAD CAM and also Machine Shop Maths and lots of free articles teaching you more about programming with G-Code. And don't forget to follow me on social media where I often give tips and tricks on G-Code programming. And you can find me under the name G-Code Tutor on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest.